Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm your host, Saurabh from DSCI, and welcome you to the Tech Saga Emerging Tech Episode 9, which is creating connected world with Internet of Everything, bringing people, things, data, and process together. I hope all participants can hear me loud and clear, and I would request everybody to close all other web applications for a seamless experience. All participants are requested to use the chat feature to tell us if you are facing any issue in hearing us. Also, you may ask as many questions as possible and interact with speakers throughout the session. So moving on, we have two eminent speakers who will be joining us for the next 90 minutes to share their valuable insights. We will start with Mr. Ishan, Senior Analyst, Data Security Council of India, for setting the context about the share session, followed by a panel discussion. And we have Mr. Sunil Devi, a well-known IoT industry thought leader in India, having 28 years of experience in the IT and telecom industry, of which close to 20 years was with AT&T, one of the top communication service providers of the world, and one of the top 20 companies in the Fortune 500 plus 2021. In his new phase of life, Sunil will be advise, advising and consulting AI and IoT startups that are aspiring for the next year. <clears throat> Sorry, level of growth. And we have Mr. Adosh Kumar, co founder and CEO of Tagbox. Tagbox is helping organizations to make their supply chains more reliable by solving problems like quality and compliance, end to end traceability, and operational efficiency. So, with no further ado, I would request Mr. Ishan to take the session ahead. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Saurabh, uh, for setting up the context. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome Mr. Sunil and Mr. Adas uh, for this particular webinar. So this particular uh, particular webinar is a part of, you know, uh, Tech Saga Emerging Tech Webinar Series, and this is episode nine, which we are doing on the Internet of Things technology, and the theme is around the creating the connected world with Internet of Everything, where we are trying to bring people, things, data, and the process together. So uh, as we have seen that uh, IoT has been a a key enabler for the automation among the industry when we talk about the iot we have seen that a lot of connectivity is going around machine is getting connected to the machine um, a machine is getting connected to the infrastructure people are getting connected to the machine or the machine is getting connected to the people if we take an example like an automotive vehicle so the vehicle is trying to connect with infrastructure a lot of b2v is coming b2i it is coming so everywhere the iot is playing a very crucial role in all sort of industries uh, 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 in this in the today's world some of the basic examples like we have seen that a lot of variable devices are coming in the market that is also a you know iot with the help of iot all the variable devices are coming and you know happening sort of you know activities around it also like with the government initiatives on the smart cities there are a lot of been projects which are developed on the intelligent transportation system some sort of smart parking where is totally functional by the or you know the, the capabilities which are defined by the internet of things if we talk about the manufacturing industry, so there is a transition which is happening as of now. It is from the industry 3.0 to the industry 4.0. And the, when the transition is happening, there is a lot of automation which is going, you know, across the manufacturing industry. A lot of robotics and automation is coming. A lot of, you know, AR, VR, all the sort of now the booming things, the metaverse is coming. So IoT has been a very key enabler for, you know, across the industries, wherever the automation or wherever the digital transformation is happening. And with the IoT, there are a lot of other technology capabilities which have been, you know, which has been trying to integrate with the IoT thing. For example, big data analytics. So when we talk about the data-driven solution, so with the help of IoT, a lot of data is being collected, and then the big data with the help of big data analytics, a lot of insights have been covered from this uh, particular thing. So to uh, to proceed with this webinar, uh, I would like to call upon Mr. Sunil to give his introductory remark on this particular theme. Right, Dishwan, I am having a problem with my uh, webcam. So after I finish my initial comments, I'll just try to fix this. But firstly, I would like to thank uh, you and the Tech Saga team for inviting me to join this panel discussion. And uh, the theme for the discussion is extremely valid. You know, it is all about creating a connected world with the Internet of Everything, bringing people, things, data, and processes together. I think every word in this theme is very, very powerful. And for IoT to work and to bring value, it would need that seamless integration of people, process, and technology. Right now, talking about technology, 
uh, and when you're talking about IoT, it's all about sensorizing the physical world and extracting data, right? So mere IoT data is not good enough. The real value would come when you add context to that data. For example, if you are measuring and extracting, say, vibration or temperature readings from a machine in a shop floor in a manufacturing company, you would also want to know the current environmental conditions under which it is operating, which means that you need to integrate with weather systems through APIs. You would not. You would also like to know when the machine was bought, who the manufacturer, when was it last serviced, why did it fail last time. You know, so it means integrating of all your manufacturing applications, be it your MES and also the other enterprise systems that you might have, ERP and um, CRM and so on. The second is the process. So any digital transformation initiative means that you have to change the way you do your business, you know, whether it's internally or the, as it relates to your process, you know, how you engage with your customers and partners, uh, leveraging digital channels. So you can also automate a lot of your workflows and your processes, right? So it's all about business process transformation. So process obviously very important. The people is a very, very important dimension. You might have the best technology, the best processes, but if you do not have people who are skilled enough to work with these tech tools and processes, uh, you know, then it's not going to work, right? For digital skilling is paramount and how people leverage the power of data to help them in their day-to-day -day operation is extremely important. In fact, one of the barriers why organizations are slow to start or never get started on their DX journey is because of lack of sufficient people skills, right? And the last part is you're talking about data. So you sensorize, you get all the data. The real value obviously will come from the insights that you get from it, right? Organizations would need to make the right decisions. They need to predict business outcomes. And this is where your analytics, your AI and machine learning would come in. And we're also started to see this whole convergence of AI and IoT. Perhaps we can use the word AIoT now you know, to reflect that kind of a trend, right? So these are my initial thoughts, uh, Ishan, as, you, as we relate to this particular topic. Yeah, that's a really you know impressive. Necessarily, you covered each and every point, which includes the <laughs> overall ecosystem of the IoT. We talk about you know uh, where, where so IU, IoT basically IoT is a subset of um, you know IoE where we are trying to combine each and everything like network things, people, data, and processes. Okay, to you know to give a proper automation, all these things have to work together in a in line. So in this context, I just uh, move to Mr. Adar. So sir, your introductory comments on this particular theme. No, thanks. Thanks, Ishan, for inviting uh, me to the panel. Um, I think very relevant topic, obviously, uh, you know, at Stackbox, we are living and breathing IoT every day for the last six years. Um, I, I'll I'll come up with a, a very fundamental perspective to IoT and why I think it is, you know, it is game changing. Um, so I come from a data and analytics background. Um, so before Tagbox, I've spent 15 years in the analytics industry. Um, and, you know, we were working with marketing data and customer data and banking data, uh, and, you know, and for all of these data, and these were all, you know, these are all big data paradigms, right? So you had your Hadoop clusters for large banks, uh, which are processing, you know, millions of data points every single time a transaction happened. Uh, and they were able to do so because there were data pipelines and data architecture fundamentally created to capture these transactions, analyze these transactions, and then take appropriate actions. Now, IoT and why it is so game changing is, is that it's bringing the same paradigm to entities which are only physical right now, right? There is no digital element to most of those entities. Like for example, if you're talking about a truck, uh, you know, if you were talk, talking about a pallet, you're talking about maybe a machine, uh, you know, 20 year old machine, which exists inside a automotive plant, you're talking about a person who is moving on the shop floor, they do not have a digital entity today. There is no data architecture. There is no data pipeline. There is nothing, uh, you know, uh, with which you can actually capture, um, uh, you know, these transactions uh, digitally. So which this is why I think everybody needs to understand that the time of IoT is here. Um, you know, uh, obviously there are many, many different types of use cases and applications which we'll talk about during the course of this webinar. But the importance of IoT is because, you know, we are now able to digitize any and all entities uh, which traditionally we have had we have never heard the voice of these entities before and now we are able to do so um, that's why we at tag boss uh, you know, are extremely excited about what the future holds and if you look at gartner's uh, uh, you know life cycle that they talk about the hype cycle they talk about for technologies iot has now uh, exited the trough of disillusionment 
and now we are going into you know areas where you will start seeing much more adoption and deployment of iot across a range of use cases both on the b2c side with you know smart appliances and smart cities and whatnot and also b2b side on supply chain logistics manufacturing and so on so yeah really really excited about it yeah so th that's a great point you test that iot is not only in a demand with respect to the b2b thing but lot of other b2c thing so from both the side that demand is being created you know and that both the side a lot of niche application is coming as well as the older application are getting mature lot of lot of you know number of people have started using the for just a small example like a smart variable so a lot of number of smart devices are being in, uh, increasing as well as if i talk about the b2b lot of uh, automation is being done so if i talk uh, specifically about uh, India so there are a lot of development is going on a lot of smart city development is going on a lot of smart factories development is going on and if we come to our you know healthcare industry of India so a lot of data driven uh, data driven decision is being ma ma made by with the help of data and with, the, with from where that data come it comes from the lot of different IOT device in the health um, in the medical sector as well then we talk about you know like a smart retail thing so retail is also the retail industry of india is also changing there are a lot of different iot device if i talk a simple payment system so a lot of pu devices being advanced the next generation pu as devices are coming in the market then some sort of fitness sort of thing real uh, real time data fitness tracker is coming and then in last if i talk about the telecommunication so with the help of you know roll out of the 5g a lot of you know there will be boom towards the uh, towards the iot thing so mr sunil uh, in this context i want to understand from you so what do you think like what are the different sort of drivers and the future outlook of uh, you know iot industry in india with specifically for the india right it's a great question nishan so i think i am very bullish about the future of iot in india because i think we kind of barely scratch the surface the opportunity is very huge and there are enough drivers now that can really trigger a lot more adoption in the in the next few years uh, first and foremost we're going to see the cost of iot hardware will come down you know so one of the barriers in the past have been the cost of iot hardware uh, the price have come down but the government launched the pli scheme a couple of years back and one of the sectors that is going to get benefited from that would be the telecom sector which also consists a lot of iot hardware so when you start making iot hardware in india that will drive down cost further down right so that will hopefully trigger a lot more adoption and all the whole ecosystem has to be built right because we still get our chipsets our memory modules from china taiwan so i think at some point in time once we build that ecosystem and we have fabs in india when we make all those components then i think that will be uh, when we can see the cost of hardware really coming down secondly what we are seeing is cloud has kind of become ubiquitous today right adoption has increased significantly and uh, in the budget uh, in february the government also announced that data center will now be given infrastructure status which means that they would get concessional financing and uh, you know with a lot more data being generated and uh, most of the hyperscale providers have their zones or the nodes in india so cloud adoption will pick up a lot right and a lot more data centers will get mushroomed across the country it won't it won't be confined to only the bigger cities you'll probably find the data center providers going to tier two tier three cities as well connectivity and i come from the telecom background so uh, you know uh, needless to say connectivity will be the backbone right i mean you need to have very reliable and secure connectivity and the options for connectivity today are far more compared to what it was in the past right so you had yeah. uh, 2g 3g 4g uh, in the next six seven months hopefully we'll have 5g in india and uh, one of the characteristics of 5g is massive machine type communication you know which is high connection density you can have about a million devices in a one square kilometer radius so when 5g comes that will trigger a lot more adoption and there are also other connectivity options like for example narrowband iot um, you know uh, cellular operators can offer that technology very good for certain use cases where you just want to send very little amount of information to the cloud just say a condition of an asset so narrowband iot will again you know cost the uh, the module cost is very very low so that will drive the cost of device down so so the options are there satellite connectivity is an option still expensive but uh, you know we have an open sky policy hopefully uh, we'll see the cost of satellite receivers coming down further and uh, that could be an option especially in rural areas of india and i think what is most important is the realization among enterprises you know this is the biggest driver that enterprises have to realize that they need iot as a strategic necessity uh, forget about growth for the survival they need iot right yeah 
so adoption is very low and what we're seeing today is that you know this whole poc to production time frames in india are very long a lot of the pocs take a hell of a long time right uh, and uh, even those pocs uh, that convert into production they are not scaling as much the real value will come uh, when you are able to scale those projects i think that's going to be important and you know the opportunity as i said is huge in india billions of assets that can be sensorized i mean just look at manufacturing you know uh, so many assets in a shop floor there are about yeah. 36 crore msmes in india maybe 30% of them are manufacturing msmes many of them are not even started you know uh, their journey transportation and logistics fleet mm-hmm. if you look at fleet uh, and logistics sector in india very unorganized sector millions of vehicles that need to be connected then look at connected yeah. car auto auto sector uh, as per a global study if you look at all the connected cars in india india's car connected car penetration is only 5% whereas globally it is almost 30% yeah. right uh, energy and utilities again there you know smart metering i think there's a big initiative launched a few mm-hmm. years back where they want to replace conventional meters with smart meters 250 million smart meters over the next few years then connected healthcare you talked about smart city projects so you know when you connect all these things ishan imagine the value that can be unlocked from the huge amount of data yeah. that is going to get generated as you generate more data you obviously need to analyze it that will be in democratization of ai a lot more cloud adoption will pick up and you know there are a lot of players who would benefit not just the end user who consume it but even the solution providers and the 1500 plus startups iot startups who are there in india that will also mean more jobs right Uh, you know fast and sullivan have predicted that by 2025 we'll have a the market size will be about 9.28 billion which a kagar yeah. of almost 14% and as per a nascom report which i was referring to yesterday 5000 iot related patents were filed in india which is massive right yeah so so i think yeah. there are enough drivers now to adopt on account of all the factors that i've just stated and i'm really bullish that you know this growth will only accelerate going forward yeah, yeah that's true yeah that's a that's a good point mr sunil you touch upon like uh, for every industry and for any sort of you know new product come so i believe that hardware cost is a massive cost in which we have you know hardware plus the software so you touch upon the connected vehicles also so i just you, i was studying about it so in the connected or in the autonomous vehicle when the firstly lidar or the autonomous vehicle were coming into the market so the lidar cost have around 15000 17000 or the 20000 us dollar but the time by time there will have been a lot of developments some sort of government initiatives some sort of pla scheme now you can get that loud lidar around 4 to 5000 so the same thing or the same sort of transition has to happen with all the hardware devices with you know being integrated um, or sort of being in the iot devices that's a good point so if go, if we move forward if we talk about specifically about the supply chain so supply chain is the most crucial uh, thing or the thing or the, you can say the process for any sort of product or sort of any uh, industry and the, as of now the supply chain has been a very critical and very complex if we talk about any sort of small product so there are number of n number of stakeholders in that particular supply chain and if there is a issue with any sort of stakeholder so the it affects the overall supply chain in cyber security also we have a very you know huge use case around the supply chain security because if any sort of leakage happen in this, in a one vendor it can you know create a massive issue so uh, in this context you know uh, mr other i want to understand a uh, more uh, from you as the tag box is more into the supply chain so how we are trying to and how we or how we can bring resiliency into supply chain with iot and you know what's the role of data in that sure sure great great question rishan um so let's just first define resilience right? resilience really means that you know when there are shocks uh in a supply chain then you are able to respond act in a timely manner so that a lot of that shock gets absorbed and you know you don't break that's basically what resilience means that's what reliability comes from yeah um i'll give maybe two or three different examples and try to build a case i mean and because i think the participants would love to see you know live real life examples around these like the first thing is i mean if you take 5 years ago 10 years ago uh, our the trucks which would operate in india wouldn't even have a gps tracker yeah. right? so there is no way to find out where the truck is when it is going to arrive how should i plan my resources at the unloading you know warehouse let's say uh, you know so none of that could be done i i don't have any predictability in my supply yeah. chain right what we are trying to do with iot uh, and data in general about supply chain is to build more predictability when you have predictability then you can you know you know just dovetail that with uh, actionability 
and have plan A, plan B, plan C in place for different scenarios. Right. So if you look at in the last five years, right, a bulk of the trucking environment in India has gotten connected from a GPS perspective. Now, obviously, there are uh, many companies also giving, you know, driver behavior, tire pressure, fuel monitoring, etc., etc. All of this yeah. in one way or the other is related to giving better data about, uh, let's say, the truck which is carrying your goods. Uh, now you are able to know when the truck has started from a particular place, when it's going to end. At the next place, you can plan the resources accordingly. You can plan out the entry exit of multiple trucks which come, excuse me, into your plant accordingly. You can plan uh, the loading, unloading docks appropriately. So with this predictability, you can start planning your supply chain in a little bit better manner, right? Uh, another example of this, we work, um, Tagbox works, uh, you know, with a lot of perishable food kind of companies, so e-commerce companies, in the largest e-commerce companies we work with. Now they store their perishable products, you know, perishable products come from suppliers in a truck. It gets stored in a warehouse and it moves to a, you know, typically a dark store or a cloud kitchen or whatever, right? And in this entire uh, place earlier, there was no way to identify what's the temperature at which the perishable products are being maintained. Uh, and that becomes, you know, very, very you know, it, it's pretty crazy to imagine that, you know, the, the consumer who is consuming, let's say, a, you know, uh, uh, some dairy product, uh, is that being maintained at the appropriate temperature or not? So now with IoT, at every single point in the supply chain, you get real-time visibility of, let's say, temperature uh, and then many other parameters, but let's say temperature has focus on that. And with that, you get predictability of the product quality in the supply chain. Yeah. So if, if something is going wrong in the supply chain, let's say a truck breaks down, right? And I don't know if I, you know, and I have, let's say, an hour to save my produce, now I can get a signal, right? IoT is all about getting signals as fast as possible. I can get a signal that my truck has broken down at its place. The temperature right now is four degrees. I have maybe an hour before the temperature starts going into 10 degrees, 15 degrees, and at, at which point you will have complete wastage. Similarly, in a, in, a, in a dark store or a cloud kitchen or a retail store, if uh, you know you can have real-time signals that temperature has is going up or will go up and eventually spoil the produce. And with that signal, you can have AI workflows which can auto trigger, uh, send out SMSs, emails to various stakeholders. They can take appropriate action, fix the problem before it gets uh, uh, before it gets worse. Right? Same thing. Uh, we are doing a lot of work with uh, uh, heavy appliances kind of companies, furniture, where damage is a big problem in the supply chain. Right. So we are helping them understand the root cause of this damage. Right. So how do you make this resilient? You can only make this resilient by knowing. Uh, you know, why damage is happening? Is it happening during loading, unloading, in transit, delivery at the customer location, right? Uh, getting those lane of profiles, doing a pre-analysis, understanding where uh, product damage is happening based on shock sensors, by the way, which is where the IoT piece comes in. Using AI to figure out was it a was it a fall? Was the thing get upside down? Right? Was it tilted? Was it bad driving? Was it a wild turn? Was it dropped at the customer apartment, right? Once you have enough of data about this entire lane profile, you can pinpoint where most of the issues are happening. Then you take corrective actions. Then you do another exercise post. You figure out whether things are fixed now. Is the lane profile looking much more average, I would say. And then you take the appropriate corrective and preventive actions. Right? So with these three examples, as you can see, when you start getting data and signals about what's happening in your supply chain on a real-time basis, then first of all, you will just have that data to be able to react. But then once you have enough data over three months, six months, you can start planning uh, uh, in your supply chain and the, the downstream, all the aspects of supply chain can be planned out. So that's the way you, know, you can improve overall resilience of the supply chain. So what I understand, Mr. Adil, that IoT not only, you know, track uh, some sort of truck track some sort of you know food item it also help you with the help of data to also optimize the overall supply chain it also That's try right. to create a very good resilient laptop it the, all the product which are coming it should be not you know damaged yeah that's such a you know very good example of, of the covering the overall logistics around the supply chain. So going moving forward, so 
IoT and IoT we have talked about. So there is a one also, you know, type of services which the vendors or the IoT vendors are offering that is a IoT as a service sort of thing where, you know, like all the hardware and all the software that is owned by the uh, IoT provider itself. And that just for being a user, I just need to connect and I just need to install the all sort of things. So Mr. Sunil, I want to understand more from you on this particular, you know, IoT as a service. So what do you think the what should be the future outlook for this IoT as a service or going forward? user will you know try to own those sort of product or they will be more inclined towards iot as a service yeah i think that's the future Vishan. so today you know we need to get to a stage where iot has to reach a certain level of maturity and scale because even yeah. for the guys who provide the service uh, hardware or everything bundled together they should reach a scale at which it becomes commercially viable for them to offer something like that to their end customers right so um, and the, so the guys who consume IoT services, you know, the end customer, uh, their expectation is also changing because they also not just want everything on an optics or subscription base, but at some point in time, when we reach a level of maturity, they would want certain business outcomes to be achieved. You know, so we'll probably see in the future where they only pay based on certain business outcomes being achieved, right? So, so one has to have a very long-term view, you know, and not just be myopic and look at it from a very short-term perspective. And I think there are enough global use cases that are well documented. I think all of us know about the classic Michelin tire as a service yep. use case, you know, um, mm -hmm. where you know the uh, uh, you know the the billing was based on the number of kilometers that the tire is on the road, right? Yep. Uh, and they even promised a certain fuel efficiency uh, to yep. their customers, which is unheard of, right? Uh, and if they're not able to meet that kind of efficiency, then you know they were paying back the customer. So amazing. And I, I also understand there's a large Indian tire company who's trying to pilot such a model uh, to offer tires or service based on kilometers on the road. Uh, Philips, I think, launched lighting as a service, and Rolls Royce, who make aircraft engines, uh, they they offered engine as a service. Uh, a few years back, I, in fact, I was actively involved in this project. A very large MNC consumer appliance company wanted to disrupt the water purifier market. It's about 2018, and they mm -hmm. wanted uh, you know to offer uh, water purifiers for free to a customer and charge based on the volume of water consumed. So the customer doesn't buy it for free. Sorry, the customer yeah. buy, gets it for free. He doesn't buy okay. it, but there's a volume sensor which will measure the volume of water, right? Yeah. So so it is like a water as a service. And they try to kind of disrupt the unorganized market because see, while they compete against the other manufacturers of water purifiers, there are also the unorganized market, guys who sell yeah. 10 liter cans, 20 liter cans. But what happened is that, uh, in my view, they were slightly ahead. You know, the market was not ready for that model. This is four years back. Maybe today the market might be ready because the demographics of India have also changed. A yeah, lot more younger people who are amenable to such kind of models because consumer mindset also has to change, right? In fact, there's a water purifier company in Bangalore called Drain Prime, which is also attempting a model like this. They're making a water purifier where they charge based on water consumed. Uh, consumed. You know, so interesting, mm -hmm. right? So, so the other thing is that the, the onus is also on the companies who offer such a service to train their people. So when you're offering IoT-enabled products to a customer, charging based on consumption, the field staff also have to be trained to, you know, to manage it. Sellers who yeah. sell it also have to be trained, you know, instead of selling a product, they're selling a service. So, you know, so all that has to come together. It's just not for the solution providers to work on their aspects, but even, you know, for the uh, uh, manufacturers uh, to also make the necessary changes internally uh, to be able to offer something to their end customers. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. So in a same way, like I can also say that like, earlier we used to, you know, take a lot of hard drives for the storage of data. But now we are using data storage as a service that is cloud. We are using Google Photos, we are using OneDrive and all those sort of things. So this model has been in a, in, a, in a various use cases. And I believe and what I understand from your views as well, the future will be IoT as a service where you just need to connect to the vendor and all the things, hardware, software, platform, all the things would be taken care of by the, um, um, by the IoT vendor. 
Okay. So uh, uh, there's a one thing like there is a lot of sensors which we are trying to integrate with the IoT thing, and with all those sensors create a lot of data. There are a lot of sensor, you know, sensor fusion is happening, and some sort of we are trying to combine the digital capabilities with the IoT. Like we are trying to, you know, uh, integrate some sort of blockchain with the help of AI ML. We are trying to have some sort of data driven sort of thing for our client and for the you know getting some sort of data driven decision making. Or else we are trying to put some sort of encryption or the cryptology thing for the cyber security sort of thing. So Mr. Adesh, I want to understand from your point of view, how do you see this thing? Like if we are trying when we are trying to combine the IoT sensor and sort of digital capabilities like blockchain, AI ML, and all sort of thing, other you know digital capabilities for optimizing the process. Sure, sure, Ishan. So I think let's I think fundamentally we need to understand the the construct of IoT. Right. So when we say IoT, what that means is basically we're talking about data generation, right? Like I was saying earlier, uh, right? We are just generating data from any and all entities for whatever context, whatever problem that you're looking to solve. Um, just generation of data obviously is not enough, right? Yeah. Um, there, there has been data with banks forever, but only in the last maybe 15, 20 years, all of that data has been used you know in machine learning models predictive models regression models etc to be able to make decisions about banking customers right i mean who should i give a loan to uh, right who should i not give a loan to who should i offer a cross sell product and so on and so forth the same principles apply to data generated with iot also right so for example if there is a if there is a you know a, a box of vaccines which is traveling uh, right cross country and you are trying to generate temperature data, location data, etc., using IoT without context and without the end goal in mind, that data is meaningless. You might be getting hundreds and thousands of data points, but without context, it's meaningless. And hence, you need to have the appropriate, um, I'll call it data usage uh, strategy, mm -hmm. right? So the IoT will give you data, uh, it will give you clean data, it will give you data at an entity level, it will uh, digitize your supply chain, it will digitize logistics, it will digitize your manufacturing area. But then the application should be very clear for the business. So I will actually take all the technologies that you talked about. I'll come to it. I think fundamentally what we need to understand that without up an appropriate business case, without a very clear ROI, IoT will never see uh, the light of the day, right? So for example, if you talk about a manufacturing shop flow, mm -hmm. you know, and people want to understand, you know, is the skilled operator working on the right stations? Right? Yeah. Is there anybody in a uh, you know restricted area who is the authorized operator driving the forklift? What is the utilization of my forklift? These are yeah. genuine business questions because these directly impact productivity, these impact product defects, this impact employee safety, this impact yeah. utilization metrics, and so on and so forth. So once yeah. these metrics, the KPIs are you know clearly listed, then you put your IoT sensors on you know all these things. You start getting digital data. And then you create your appropriate, first of all, machine learning models to be able yeah. to understand this behavior in a better manner. Then you create your predictive models using machine learning to see, okay, what behavior can be predicted and hence you can actually take corrective action right now so that that behavior does not happen. This could be adverse behavior, for example. And then you can, in a supply chain con construct, you can use this data in, you know, with blockchain kind of application. So there could be a blockchain platform. Yeah right uh, i mean like for example um, walmart and um, ibm i think and Musk, i think they have come up with a food based blockchain program called food trust uh, basically what it is is that as food products are moving from let's say the farm to a retail store where a customer is purchasing it at walmart you get the complete visibility uh, of that food product just its complete traceability and then on top of it you know environmental conditions like temperature humidity because that is a right so that you get and then on top of that you write your blockchain smart contract saying that if temperature in the supply chain uh, you know ready goes above 10 degrees celsius there is an automatic penalty that happens to the transporter using that blockchain smart contract kind of a framework and yeah. by the way the same data right so let's say you have strawberries right and you have the complete visibility of temperature and humidity of strawberries until it reaches the store if you saw that these strawberries have gone through above average exposure in terms of their you know conditions then there is a direct pricing decision that can be made saying that okay now these strawberries 
I need to price them at 20% discount right now yeah. so that I can immediately liquidate that inventory and it won't get spoiled because otherwise it's a 100% loss for me. Right? So yeah. everything that you talked about, right? Blockchain, machine learning, AI obviously comes in with, you know, the automated yeah. BPM workflows, uh-huh. right? All of that is relevant as long as there is a very clear business case where with ROI associated with it, then you deploy your IoT sensors, get that data, and then start applying all of these technologies on top of the data to be able to make business decisions. Yeah. It is no different from big data analytics in general, which you would do for a marketing, uh, for, for, you know, for banking, for traditionally supply chain planning, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's, a, that's a, again, you have given a very good, uh, you know, example that, from the with the help of iot we are trying to or not we are, actually we are trying we are coming up with the actual the price of those strawberries if they have you know inventory have passed on that's yeah. a good, very good example so and like in india we talk about the telecom industry so our telecom industry is transforming we are trying to you know or getting a lot of development around 4g to the 5g transition so when the overall this tra- uh, uh, transition is happening so there are a lot of different hardware sort of device with a lot of iot devices which are being integrated there are a lot of smart modules which are coming smart sort of object uh smart sort of you know equipments are coming then we will have our own smart devices which will be you know enable the 5g sort of thing so mr sunil in this context i want to understand from you how the telecom industry is utilizing the benefit of internet of things maybe you can talk about one or two use cases around it right so i can i can share a couple of use cases uh, you know, which my the, my previous company that they used to use it, which is definitely replicable in India. So one use case I would like to talk about is, you know, they were using drones, which were fitted with high resolution cameras, which will do a lot of, which will take a lot of video of the towers, because see, many times you are not able to go to the top of the tower. You want to do maintenance of cell towers, you know, and, uh, you know, you use drones with the cameras, which will capture the video images. And then you push it into a video analytics server and then using the power of analytics you can actually get to some level of accuracy in terms of predicting when would be the right time to do maintenance of those towers so that is very much replicable in india you know we have an, oh, a drone policy that was announced by the government uh, you know so uh, very very much replicable in india secondly in, in india today uh, you know many of the telecom operators use a lot of diesel generators as a backup and these are yeah. now connected to IoT because they would want to monitor. Many of them are very remote locations, so not it's not going to be cost effective for them to send people to do a repair. So now those are all IoT enabled. You can remotely monitor those diesel generators, uh, know the fill levels of diesel, so that you know exactly when is the right time to replenish. So that's another example which I wanted to share, and uh, a couple of other things. So for example, in the US, uh, you know, in my when I used to work earlier, uh, we used to have uh, about 65 to 70 thousand vehicles, fleet of vehicles. Which used to carry a technicians from one point to the other. A lot of these vehicles crisscrossing the streets of the U.S. And uh, the whole fleet management application was hosted on the cloud, monitoring the fleet, knowing where exactly it is, uh, you know, monitoring the driver behavior, and you know exactly with, you know when will when will the technician likely to read to a customer place to lay the fiber or install an equipment and all the stuff. And the last thing which I wanted to share is again, uh, you know, this relates to sustainability. Uh, they built an energy and building management system in the US, about 600 odd buildings uh, which were there, which had about 27,000 pieces of equipment. A lot of them are energy guzzlers like the heating, ventilation, and ACs. Uh, so, you know, using IoT to monitor the energy, first of all, to measure how much of energy being consumed, because that is the first part. Then would be the optimization piece. But yeah. after having implemented an energy and building management system, they were actually able to shave significant, uh, save significant amount on energy cost. Uh, because they were able to do that, and uh, and in India, forget about the telecom industry. Uh, everybody is now having an ESG agenda, environmental, yeah. social, social, and governance, and just look at the environmental part, right? Sustainability is key for any organization today, and uh, you know whether it's at a factory or whether it is a large real estate building, everybody wants to today use technology to be able to optimize their energy spend, right? So that's another area you know which is uh, where IoT can definitely play a huge part, uh, Sean. Yeah, got it. That's a that's a you know very in depth uh, about the use cases around the uh, telecom industry for IoT. 
so uh, now I want to talk about the sort of you know uh, the research and innovation. So research and innovation have been a very key for the for the you can say the new product development sort of thing, new R and D sort of thing which has been done. So Mr. Others, I want to understand from your point of view as you know the in the tank box you're continuously building new sort of product. So like what are your views on you know sort of research and innovationing research and innovation happening in India specifically in the IoT sector and your views on academia industry collaboration. Uh, sure, sure, absolutely. Um, so I think, uh, uh, I mean, like we are, uh, you know, one of like the breed of startups which have come through, uh, focused on India as a market with very, you know, with applications which are global, right? So um, I, I can definitely see that in the last five to six years, uh, see, India typically is a laggard. Let's be real, right? In terms of adoption of technologies, all typically the enterprises in India like to pick up technologies which has already worked in the west uh, you know yeah. for the last let's say decade and then at the end once everything is mature and proven that's when it comes to india and we enjoy the benefits of it that's been the traditional indian ent enterprise mindset yeah. but because of the startup boom that has happened in the last decade we are doing a lot of uh, you know ground innovation in india uh, and uh, there is increasingly more confidence by Indian enterprises, uh, you know, uh, for solutions which are uh, developed in India for India, right? So I think let's I think we need to understand and appreciate this fact that the biggest blocker for innovation typically has been the fact that we have not had a captive Indian market which would readily, you know, uh, be okay with local innovation and you know giving that a playground. That has not happened so far, but now it. And also, what's happening in parallel is we are having, uh, you know, hundred unicorns coming up in different types of technologies, uh, right? Be it fintech, be it edu tech, uh, obviously IoT, logistics tech, and so on and so forth. And that is fueling a lot of innovation. I can see IoT picking up across the board, uh, right? Innovation is happening on multi fronts. Uh, ability to generate data from machines which have existed for a very long time. So tapping into PLCs of machines, getting data and then being able to analyze various metrics, right? That's something that is many startups homegrown in India are doing, and then they're taking the solution to uh, uh, outside. Uh, we are seeing a lot of companies connecting trucks, connecting logistics, like I was saying earlier, examples of driver behavior, tire monitoring, all these things, right? Uh, something that we are doing uh, in-house, a, a lot of activity which is happening in terms of camera vision, uh, and drones and I'll say complementary because a lot of you know if you look at oil and gas plants which are huge the ability to monitor them seamlessly using drones for example or manufacturing plants inside using uh, you know using uh, cameras is something a lot of people are working on um, we you know at Tagbox we are working on connected workers and connected equipment connected assets kind of solutions using IoT tags and uh, you know the entire software platform on top of it to be able to solve a variety of problems in the man machine uh, material intersection kind of areas so uh, i think literally sky is the limit right now uh, also from a government perspective there is this whole push towards smart cities so there are many uh, companies coming through for smart water metering smart uh, yeah. you know all, all your smart parking smart electricity uh, right so i think i see very interesting uh, i mean obviously the the, the typical divide the rural versus urban divide continues to be there and continues to grow which is unfortunate um so we will continue to see that but especially in a few urban areas i see a lot of b2c applications which will come through because of the local innovations which are happening because everybody hates bangalore traffic and you know people are then now trying to solve for it right uh using technology using and you know using some homegrown uh, solutions um, but across, I think I, I don't think there is really one particular industry where a lot is happening. Every industry, uh, we are seeing some very very interesting, uh, you know, innovation application happening, especially in the connected space. So you know, medical devices being connected, um, uh, like, you know, in hospitals to be able to you know generate real time data. Uh, you know, uh, all the smart health uh, aspects. I think we are all aware of. Everybody wears a Fitbit. Everybody wears you know one of those yeah. smart watches right now. Everybody knows how much they are sleeping, how much they are walking. Uh, right. I mean, there are these devices now which can, you know, have real time view of your uh, blood sugar. You, it's a small yeah. thing which goes onto your arm, and you know, you know when you have had too much of dessert, for example. So I think everybody 
again the bottom line is everybody is trying to generate data which was not available before and the data becomes then the asset to be able to monetize so I think, yeah. and we'll continue to see that uh, partnerships with academia continue to be on the same lines uh, you see that data and analytics as an industry has evolved uh, over the last uh, you know maybe two decades uh, and in the last five to six years every single MBA college or even some in now case in even engineering colleges are now offering two-year PGP courses on analytics yeah, yeah. Uh, the same thing is going to happen on the IOT space also probably more on the engineering side because now you're talking about hardware and embedded software and design and so on um, so I think there is going to be a lot of focus on creating uh, IOT oriented courses which will come through yes. especially from the engineering side um uh, but i think uh, i'm seeing a lot of uh, um, uh, you know colleges calling out corporate uh, and startups like us to be able to come and share with their students what's the art of the possible as far as iot and you know all this is concerned in fact just to tell you we are actually hosting an event uh, with iim bangalore and nascom so an industry body an educational body and tagbox we are actually hosting an event in july uh, which basically focuses on how do you maintain food quality and safety in a supply chain uh, using technology using iot right so i think more and more such partnerships will keep coming uh, you know as we move along so, so, so to conclude this like uh, for every industry for every bread there has to be some sort of academic participation or some sort of research and the development size from the academy as well and that has to be you know uh, in a sort of partnership with the startup or with the large enterprises yeah so if i move forward if i talk specifically about the manufacturing industry so there have been a lot of you know uh, digital transformation or the digitalization sort of thing is happening so earlier we have seen that there are a lot of transition from our industry 1.0 to industry 2.0 3.0 3.5 4.0 and now the industry 5.0 is coming so there is a transition which is happening from industry 4.0 to the 5.0 the you know the the academia have done some sort of research papers around the industry 5.0 there have been a you know a lot of study around the industry 5.0 where we are trying to move or we are we are trying to do the transition from a cyber physical system and in terms of you know uh, hyper hyper personalization and industry 5.0 we are coming more in terms of you know combining resiliency combining sustainability and sort of human uh, you know centricity so mr sunil i want to understand from you like when the you know this industry 5.0 will be integrated like we can say the four to five years or maybe down the line so how this will be impacting the overall you know iot industry and what sort of application the uh, when we talk when we talk about the manufacturing industry so that we have industrial iot the iot so how all this thing will going to shape up with the industry 5.0 yeah so you asked a very futuristic question ishan because india today yeah. is maybe at three or three dot five yeah. <laughs> industry four dot five adoption yeah, that's has to pick up a lot in yeah. india and you there are just i think what two lighthouse factories from india i mean you know uh, this world economic forum they've coined this thing called lighthouse factory you know factories which have implemented the uh, best of industry 4.0 technology and started to see value from that i think there's yeah. one from there's a tata steel factory and there's i think uh, a recom factory from the rpg if i'm not mistaken which are the only two lighthouse factories which is on the list of 50 odd so there's a long way to go uh, as far as india is concerned but you know uh, talking about uh, industry 5.0 uh, ishan i think one very important dimension is the human aspect here because yeah. Uh, uh, the industry 5.0 is to how to leverage the collaboration between machines which will get more powerful and accurate because you're going to have a lot more AI and IoT fused into machines. You'll probably get to a stage where machines will be autonomous, they'll be self healing, right? So machines will get powerful. And how do you combine that with the creative potential of the human being? I think that human machine, which others talked about, that human machine interaction or intersection is important. So the goal is kind of to strike a balance where you can get the best possible benefits from this human machine inter intersection right so one of course is cost optimization because uh, you would want to get a better bank for your buck use least amount of resources to generate the highest profits second thing when you talk about industry 5.0 it's also talking about uh, more greener kind of solutions you know want to reduce scrap and so on right so a lot more emphasis would be on sustainability uh, that's number two uh, third will be you talked about personalization i think uh, that's going to be the difference right i mean with so with in a competitive environment uh, so many manufacturers what would differentiate one from the other whoever is able to offer more personalized products and services 
those are the ones who would be the winners right so the level of personalization that you can bring in terms of how a consumer uses that product how are you leveraging the data that is coming from that so that you can offer more personalized product or add features that are more tailored to their use that's going to be the uh, very key important factor and also how do you leverage the creativity of the people because you know people also are working with these kind of smart machines how do they leverage data you know people also have to be creative right so i think it's uh, all these benefits that would accrue eventually when we move to that journey of industry 5.0 so as far as the, you talked about iiot i think in india um, there was a study which showed that last year i think um, uh, manufacturing industry spent about 5 and 5.5 to 6.5 billion dollars in industry 4.0 solutions if you just look yeah. at the tech spend in india last year tech spend in india was about 95 billion dollars total 95 billion dollars and manufacturing companies spent about uh, as i mentioned about close to 600 billion dollars in industry 4.0 solutions and most of them have been on analytics uh, on cloud and all that stuff right so we haven't yeah. seen the tech spend going up when it comes to iot and other emerging technologies uh, you know along with iot so i think uh, there's still a, a long way to go and i think one very important thing is uh, we need to see prod, you know the projects which are already been deployed to scale as i mentioned earlier they need to scale uh, and companies which uh, again the study which i refer to is actually a nascom study which said that uh, you know 35 to 40% of of projects are still in poc stage among manufacturing companies they still have to the production right so they yeah. need to move to production and then only they would scale uh, that has mm -hmm. to happen I mean, these are among the large companies and then imagine the msme is the uh, i mentioned about the you know, 6 crore msme is about 30% of manufacturing msmes many have not started yet they don't know how to start right so unless yeah. you you know they are contributing almost 30% to our gdp more than 50 close to 50% of our exports so unless you get the msmes to adopt iot and start off their journey it's going to be very difficult for india to achieve its goals right we have set a goal that by 2026 uh, we our gdp should be 25 uh, manufacturing should contribute 25 percent of our gdp we should hit one trillion economy uh mm -hmm. one manufacturing contribute one trillion 100 million jobs to be generated but uh, unless we speed up our accelerate industry 4.0 i think industry 5.0 is is way way long had to look at yeah, yeah. Sun, my <laughs> No, no, that, that's true. Like India is still, you know, we are trying to move from industry 3.5 to 4.0. But, but a lot of study have been there. There have been a lot of investment that, you know, we totally understand that you have to put a lot of K back. But that is also giving you a very lot of benefits if you try to automate all those things. And that's true in industry 5.0. Uh, we have to think from a perspective that humans and machines are both have to, you know, join their hands and they have to work together in a good manner that they can have a very customization all sort of or the personalization sort of thing so also what i understand that to you know uh, to have a transition and to you know to see a dream of transitioning from a 3.05 to 5.0 .5 so there has to be a very you know awareness and the training program and sort of the government initiatives so mr others i want to understand from your perspective so are there some sort of you know good government initiatives which are there specifically for the iot or are there any there's you know sort of good awareness training program is going on with respect to the iot for the consumers or for the you know vendors as well um no i think so government in general if i look at uh, startups right the whole startup india program uh, yeah. itself is a, is a is a pretty big deal right i mean like uh, i think the government is doing it bits i mean like i can see in the last two to three years uh, there is a significant momentum picked up to help startups at various stages of the journey be it um, seed capital uh, you know some equity fee free grants um, right i mean uh, we we for example won the national startup awards this year so that is the startup award itself is a pretty good program where the chosen uh, 12 or 13 or 20 startups let's say are put through a three month program uh, to help them raise capital to understand how yeah. to do sales and marketing and so on and so forth so i don't think there's a specific focus on iot in general but the government has definitely uh, laid a large canvas uh, for um, uh, startups to, a, to be able to connect to each other first of all to learn and also directly to corporates to be able to do um, uh, projects just for example you know also nascom i think government is one element but if you look at nascom cii these trade bodies nascom has opened a uh, a manufacturing center of excellence cii has an institute of logistics right and they are uh, enabling 
startups to reach uh, customers with with real use cases where the if if the startup is able to solve that use case there is a clear poc and a potential deal at hand right uh, as startups i mean once you have your technology and product that's what that's what you need you need fast access to a problem statement uh, then you need the ability to have a playground so that you can solve that problem and then eventually that translates into revenue i think so those are the kind of facilitations which are happening from the government um, i would say specifically for iot what probably is needed a little bit more iot is a cash intensive business unlike software right you just open up the shop and with 20 software engineers and you're fine right that is the burn you have to maintain with with iot there is a lot of r and d on the hardware there is uh, capex involved so you know if, if you are giving it on an iot as a service model what that means is you are purchasing all of that as inventory and then you are uh, leasing it out to the customer so you are getting inventory cost obviously the cost of finance etc so all these things are a problem i think maybe one area where the government can help is to have uh, some sort of a uh you know low cost of finance kind of a model for iot oriented startups uh, so that they don't have to bear all of this cost of inventory together they can probably lease it uh and then lease it again to the customer right so there is a back to back lease and you know the startup benefits because it's the low um cost of capital at which they are borrowing versus borrowing it directly from the bank um right so the innovation is one side but the commercial enablement is where really the government can uh, yeah got it got your point so uh, moving forward so uh, like as of now metaverse is booming too much like everywhere everyone is talking about the metaverse so in metaverse we have different component we have some sort of software as well as we you require some sort of hardware as well for the metaverse to you know to go to that particular uh, platform there a lot of ar vr devices which is coming so mr sunil i want to understand from your point of view like how iot will going to play a very crucial role in the metaverse and you know how it will going to bring the outside world into the metaverse right so metaverse is something which is still evolving ishan uh, yeah. while there are good uh, use cases where it will help the consumer segment but obviously on enterprise side also i think uh, some use cases are getting established so as you know metaverse is the convergence of the physical and digital world but we're talking about more immersive experiences you're talking about a network of three dimensional virtual worlds you know you can call it a limitless universe uh, we just cannot yeah. Uh, unplug it so and when you're talking about the access into the metaverse i think uh, uh, you're talking about ar vr headset spatial computing and the real yeah. democratization of metaverse will occur only when people can use their smartphones and their pcs to get into the metaverse because that's when uh, we'll see a lot more use of metaverse and especially ar you know we're talking about augmented reality you know the ability to integrate an overlay digital content and physical world i think ar will definitely be on Kind of trial, right? So uh, you need to see that seamless interoperability between AR and IoT data that can unlock, you know, new advanced apps that have, they can really solve real-world problems. But one example which I just wanted to share is digital twins. I think all of you all know yeah. what digital twin is. It's a virtual representation uh, of a physical asset or a process or a system. Uh, the difference between simulation and digital twin is that in the digital twin, you are actually sending real-world data. into a system you are using ai machine learning and you can optimize performance right you can uh, so you know with some degree of predictability how that product will perform in the field right and i think yeah. when you're talking about digital twin where you're doing the simulation in three dimensional environments and real time data coming in from the asset i think there are enough and more use cases in manufacturing digital twin of machines you can also build a digital twin of supply chain uh, healthcare i think philips has built a digital twin of a uh, heart um yeah. right so i think the key for the success of metaverse is how do you capture data from the physical world you need that mass ingestion of data from iot devices right that would mean that you need a lot more propagation of iot devices once you see a lot more sensorization that would mean a lot more data getting generated because without data there's obviously no value in the metaverse so yeah. so shan I, i i just want to say that uh, when you look at the metaverse Uh, one has to look at it very holistically you know what all of the technologies have to come together for the metaverse to really work and to add value right so you need iot sensorization you need a lot more data access into metaverse should be very affordable the cost of vr vr headset should come down uh, you need a lot of compute and storage because a lot of these applications are going to be hosted on the cloud so you need a lot of compute and storage 
and uh, not to forget the network you know you need uh, when you're talking about you know immersive experiences you need very low latency networks right so the 4g is not going to do because 4g you're talking about 40 50 millisecond latency if you're talking about yeah. AR, vr application they should be anywhere between 10 to 20 milliseconds or even lower and that's where 5g will play a part so 5g uh, eventually when it gets rolled out that will definitely power all these other underlying technologies so it needs all of this to work together you know all technologies working together that is when organization will really see the value of metaverse and specifically from an enterprise standpoint i think digital twin will be a, a good um, application for them to transfer yeah that that's absolutely a good insight like digital twin so i was reading about so these uh, construction uh, equipment companies what they are doing they are creating a digital twin of their particular asset and then they are trying to you know take out the ground all those sort of things so this also digital twin will also be a very good you know in terms of you know uh, extending in terms of future so going forward i would understand like a take for every industry for every electronic items there is a semiconductor chip which is there and as of now from last one one and a half year we are seeing that there is a very shortage of chip which is going on and if we talk specifically about india so india have been a very backward you know or in terms of having chip manufacturers so as of now government has worked a lot they have launched a lot of pli schemes and i believe ismc has agreed to set up their manufacturing the fab plant uh, i believe in Karnataka. so mr others i want to understand from your point of view how this chip shortage scenario across the globe has affected the overall iot industry has been there a downfall any sort of thing and with the help of and with the you can just you know try to explain like this government initiative around the pli scheme of semiconductor industry it will surely going to help us or not yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, everybody went through the crisis last uh, two years, right? I mean, yeah. uh, major uh, car manufacturers were not able to manufacture cars because there were chip shortages. So I don't think in India specifically got like extra hit or something like that. Um, yes, we don't have any capability, but so does probably rest of the world, most of it, right? Pretty much China kind of completely controls the semiconductor flow yeah uh you know in, across the world so i think uh, i think we have taken the right steps i mean in the last six months we see um with the schemes etc there are there is interest from i think vedanta i guess um right yeah. they are putting up a, a semiconductor plant etc so i think that will happen india will become um and that but that'll take time see i mean india is not i mean you see we work with vendors across the board i think there is still a lot to do on the uh, quality and price uh, for I iot products or electronics in general uh, you know from an india perspective so i think the whole make in india campaign has to be focused even more so uh, to be able to deliver more automated uh, and price effective high quality solutions on the electronic side uh, right for a local uh, you know kind of iot device uh, ecosystem to emerge it will take some time i i'm you know uh, i think we, we have we are putting stuff in the right direction i mean it's like you know where we were with respect to software development in the 1990s right uh, yeah. only after infosys and wipro and hcl and all these guys tcs got created now we are the market leaders in it so i think we are taking very similar steps now on the hardware manufacturing space also um what the what's great is uh, at least assembly of smartphones and other digital electronics is happening in India now in multiple places. Even leaders like you know Xiaomi and Apple, uh, and you know are partnering with the likes of Foxconn, for example, to be able to set up uh, units in India. So I think the electronic manufacturing, electronic assembly, as a uh, as an ecosystem, will continue to emerge. I think what happened with the chipsets in the last two years, nobody can do anything about it. Just COVID yeah, has impacted supply chains in all kinds of possible weird ways so i'm not really worried about that what i'm really uh, uh, you know hoping for is a very focused uh, automated not manual because india traditionally relies on manual right because of you know the fact that we have so much of labor cost arbitrage and we typically rely on manual but i think that will not work when it, when it comes to world class hardware manufacturing uh, electronics manufacturing so we have to set up automated and it, it's a good thing we're starting now because we can adopt the you know, latest and the greatest in that you know, in that space and be able to deliver quality uh, and timely um, electronics to uh, the rest of the world that's it that's it 
So let's uh, let's move to the next question. So Mr. Sunil, I want to understand from you, you know, like any sort of recommendation or the suggestions for the academia, startup, government and industry bodies regarding the overall IoT scenario in India. Right now, just look at the academic institutions. I think a lot of them are working towards getting their curriculum, which is more industry ready. A lot of them, like I worked on a few initiatives where I recommended the right IoT syllabus for a few universities. So obviously they should have the curriculum. Uh, which has which is more industry ready uh, there are a lot of academic institutions which are incubating startups there uh, within yeah. their campuses which is a which is a good thing to do but at the end of the day ishan iot cannot be brought to pbts people have to obviously get their hands dirty students would have to work on iot projects by right from the time they're second third year so we should see obviously the pace at which this happening should be faster as far as the startups are concerned i think it's never too late to start i think there's enough opportunity so obviously um, they need to have something different, a uh, key differentiator to solve a problem, enough problems to be solved. So um, there is opportunity there. If you're talking about government policy, uh, you will be surprised, but we don't have a formal IoT policy in India today. You know, yeah. uh, Some state governments have come up with policies before Andhra government came up with an IoT policy in 2016, mm -hmm. and then later on Telangana came up with the policy. But we need a national IoT policy because what we have are only guidelines from Telecom Regulatory Authority of India and a draft M2M guidelines which came out a few years back. So we really need a formal IoT policy, you know, which is very clear. No ambiguity should be there in that. Uh, the data protection bill, I think uh, it's still not passed yet. It's still a bill. It's not an act because uh, that will also determine how data is stored, processed and used, you know, so um, that's going to be important. And as far as the industry bodies are concerned, I think company, uh, bodies like y'all are doing a great job in terms of, you know, others talked about that manufacturing center of excellence where you are trying to test out use cases. I think that's fantastic, you know, bring the companies there, collaborate with the startups and test out use cases. I think that's great. Um, and also the awareness sessions that y'all are doing, like what you're doing today, the reports yeah. that y'all are bringing out, that's fantastic. Just one suggestion, maybe from my side, that, um, you know, sometimes what I've noticed is that especially in the past um, a lot of the sessions have been very tech focused focusing a lot on the technology so what mm. we should perhaps do in the future is that get maybe the end user companies to come and share their examples of how they have implemented what are the challenges that they went through i think you all have done it but maybe add, yeah. you know do it in a, you know uh, uh, in a more frequent manner end user companies practitioners coming and sharing challenges <laughs> in implementing iot what they implemented, what are the benefits they got, and maybe even solution providers obviously talking about a lot more use cases than talking about technology per se. Uh, but um, I think uh, uh, overall, I think uh, bodies like y'all have done a great job so far in, uh, in advocacy and, and also creating awareness, Ishan. Thanks, thanks, Mr. Sunil. Uh, same question for you, Mr. Adhaj. Any recommendations, suggestions for academia, startup, government, and industry bodies? Uh, I mean, nothing more to what I already added earlier. I think I already said, I think, uh, like I said, startups uh, like us need, um, you know, uh, I think need a very clear use case, uh, a playground to implement it. And then eventually, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, kind of intent from the uh, corporates to be able to adopt that solution across their organizations. I think that's what um, that's what everybody needs. Uh, like I said, government has already done it, spread it with a lot of different programs. Uh, but yeah, specifically for IoT, if we can look at the cost of capital angle, that would be of it. Okay. So, okay, that's great. So let's move to the Q&A part. We have a few questions. Uh, so we have answered a few of the questions already. Let, uh, like, yeah, this question is interesting. Like, how we are, you know, utilizing IoT in intelligent transportation system? So, and even, like, in oh, that's just best I cooked on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I think there are various aspects. I think I covered some of this actually during the course of the webinar today. Um, so, like I said, uh, if you look at intelligent transportation, you are essentially looking at signals. Uh, the, the hmm. you know most commonly used signal is location and time, right? So yeah. where your shipment is, uh, you know where, where when will it reach me? Uh, right, so think of it as almost like Amazon kind of a feel, right? As soon as you order, you know where your order is at. It has moved to a different facility, and now it's you know, it's out for delivery, and then now it's on your doorstep, and so on and so forth. The same kind of signals implemented in a B two B context, both yeah. both in a domestic, uh, you know, let's say truck movement, 
or it could mm-hmm. be a marine container movement or it could be an air shipment whatever it is the ability to create those signals and uh, bring about more predictability uh, so that's the basic setup for for sensitive supply chains like i mentioned earlier temperature monitoring becomes extremely crucial especially for global shipments uh, right uh, the ability to know uh, what's at what temperature and you know should do i need to take any actions to be able to save my products that's uh, obviously you know uh, something very very uh, important increasingly uh, insurance uh, industry is being uh, revitalized with iot uh, so uh, so all this connect i mean the, uh, if you know about progressive insurance in the us for example they provide a telematics units which can be fixed in your car uh, and then based on the speed at which you drive how much you brake how fast you turn your premiums get adjusted automatically the same concept is now being brought into general b2b transportation because now after you know your driver behavior etc uh, you can actually you know, it charge uh, different types of premiums the insurance can be on a very different basis um, for high value goods you can actually you know uh, because you know uh, have very clear visibility on how your high value goods are moving uh, right insurance uh, can be looked at very differently so yeah i mean once you put uh, you know the appropriate tracking methodologies inside your transportation and logistics then you get better predictability you get you know better uh, you know uh, insurance uh, premium angles as well okay that that's that's such insightful and just want uh, to add to what uh, yeah. other things yes, others talk about driver behavior so i just wanted to share one statistic which is not a good statistic ishan but there are if you just look at the connected vehicles you know uh, cars india Only about two percent of vehicles are in India. Connected cars, not connected cars, but cars. Two percent. But if you look at the road accidents happened across the world, ten percent of that are from India, right? It's not a yeah. not something for us to really be happy about. A lot of the road accidents are because of you know poor driving behavior. Definitely, that can contribute to that. And today you have technology which can monitor the driver behavior. The other mentioned your premium gets linked to how you drive, right? So mm-hmm. i think the fact that you can now monitor driver behavior how they are braking accelerating and you need to come up with a driver scoring uh, score card which will tell yeah. whether he is a rash driver or and in case he has frequently rash driving then i think he, at some point in time his license should be revoked you know so i think that's, that's one way by which you can ensure that people are more safe uh, you know mm-hmm. so and tech can play a part by monitoring the driver behavior uh, Yeah, that's a very good uh, use case, Mr. Sunil. So, what I have also in my knowledge that, uh, like, if I talk about the US or any other European country, so the insurance company puts some sort of telematics into your car that they will be monitoring all the driver behavior, you know, all those sort of thing. That's true. So, it has to be happening in India as well because yeah, that's true. We have seen a lot of you know, lot of accidents which is happening. So. in the the insurance company have to come with a, some sort of telematics unit some sort of telematics solution and they have to anyhow enter you know connect with our car so just let's take a one more question we have so with the introduction of the launch of 5g how it will going to impact the overall iot so what all changes we will going to see Can i mean you this is will come as a laser expert telecom uh, industry expert so this is will can take this question right so shanti uh, and let's be very realistic okay so yeah. um, uh, 5g probably will take about 6 7 months spectrum hasn't been optioned yet maybe in the month or two spectrum will get optioned and then we'll probably see roll out of 5g towards the second half of this year right so the killer apps initially to my view would be uh, you know for example fixed wireless access companies can look at 5g to augment their internet infrastructure which they already have or to replace an existing internet link so they'll obviously get much faster speeds that's one enhanced mobile broadband so um, a lot of our handsets today are 5g compatible so speeds will definitely be faster so uh, from a consumer standpoint i think uh, enhanced mobile broadband and of course you need to have a lot more applications where you can get definitely benefited from the low latency high speed of 5g for example gaming um entertainment apps your ultra high definition movies can be downloaded yeah. much faster and all that stuff right but if you look at it from an enterprise perspective in my view i think uh, initial adoption will probably be among manufacturing companies and i think uh, the government also allows uh, private enterprises to buy spectrum directly uh, you know from dot you don't have to go through the operator so companies might want to set up captive networks within their campuses 
and leverage mm. 5G for that. So, yeah. uh, for example, China has got about close to 5,000 such private 5G networks in China. China adoption is huge. In the Western world, we are seeing a lot more adoption of such private 5G networks within large manufacturing campuses. But uh, in, in India, given that the government is going to allow uh, you know, enterprises to directly buy 5G spectrum, yeah. I think uh, we'll probably see a lot more of those private 5G networks within mm -hmm. a campus. And that can be extended to other large campuses as well, right? For example, it could be for maybe an educational campus uh, where they could have 5G gives you much better experience because at the end of the day, Shan, uh, 5G is all about a completely new user experience because all the previous generation of technologies were all about faster data speeds. 5G is all about a better user experience. And, yeah. and that is what 5G promises to provide uh, going forward. Right, and it has to be looked at transformational. You know, you do not want incremental changes. You want tra real transformation, and it all boils down to the use case. You know, so at the end of the day, economics matter. So you won't be using 5G just for the heck of it, uh, just because it's a fad. It has to mm -hmm. be justified. There should be a solid business case, uh, clear metrics that you would need to look at before you deploy 5G. But in my view, I think it'll be private 5G within campuses, and slowly we'll start seeing adoption in other sectors like retail and healthcare and so on and so forth. With that, that's uh, such an insightful, Mr. Sunil. Yeah, now I think that's a uh, pretty via sum up with uh, all the you know other discussion pointers. So many thanks, Mr. Sunil, for you know coming and giving such insightful uh, pointers. And same to you, many thanks, Mr. Adas, for coming and you know giving sort of insightful discussion. And yeah, Absolutely. let's collaborate. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much, Ishan. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.